It was November 1996. The woman on the step, 55-year-old Charlotte, at her home in southeast Baltimore. At the time, she was raising four of her grandchildren because their mothers were unable to care for them. That gets us to Lydia, now 20 years later. Why were your children with your mother? I was in prison. Now 44, Lydia is an example of the impact of America's long-running war on drugs. Actually, me and my sister were in prison at the same time. Both involving drug violations? Yes. Lydia was 18 at her first drug arrest for possession. At 22, she was convicted of selling drugs. She was sent to the women's prison in Jessup, thus began a cycle from which she has yet to escape. Were you able to get a job? No. Because of the record? Mm -hmm. So what happened? I went and sold drugs again. And I got arrested again. I was eight months pregnant. I had my daughter, Aaliyah, in prison. Lydia was targeted by a policy that dates to the 1970s. America's public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Launched by Richard Nixon, the war on drugs would become the top priority of policing. In cities like Baltimore, arrests of users and sellers skyrocketed. From the 1980s through the 1990s, drug arrests in Baltimore jumped 72%. 99,561 arrests in the 80s, 171,348 in the 90s. Then came zero tolerance. In 2003 alone, the year this video was shot, Baltimore police made nearly 32,000 drug arrests. Plainclothes units flooded neighborhoods targeting what police called corner boys. The officer driving the car in this day, Dean Palmier, is now a deputy police commissioner. We start from ground level and uh, come out here and, and get the corner boards. Through the 2000s, drug arrests in Baltimore shot up another 58%, 171,348 to 271,513. And nearly nine out of 10 arrests on drug charges in Baltimore were of black people. What has been most detrimental to the black family in Baltimore and many other cities across this country is our criminal justice system as it relates to fighting the war on drugs. Neil Franklin, a former police commander, now advocates reform of drug laws and enforcement priorities. The high rate of arrests, he says, has left thousands of black people in Baltimore unemployable. We're kind of like perplexed as to why we have the violence we have in Baltimore City and the homicides and the shootings. When you have so many people out of work, can't get work because of criminal arrests, because of, you know, it's the war on drugs and what it does to society. And Baltimore is that prime example of what's happening in urban America across this country. In Baltimore, between 1980 and 2014, the number of drug arrests of black people by Baltimore police, 536,005. What's been the impact of getting caught up in a, criminal justice system on those charges at that age? Ah, uh, you will never get a job. You'll never be able to live the way you want to live. Your, your background is always going to come back. Drugs remain a big target of Baltimore police, even with the decriminalization of marijuana. Through September of this year, 21% of arrests in the city were for drug violations. That's just slightly lower than the rate of arrest at the peak of the war on drugs. For the 11 News I-Team, I'm Jane Miller.